I am here today to uh, do a tag video from Diane Drecke, uh who has changed her channel name now to Indigo Moon Tarot, which I love. Um, she did a tag uh, almost exactly a month ago now uh, called uh, Hashtag 8 Special Moments, and somehow I totally missed it until this week. <laughs> It's been a kind of a busy week though, or week this month. Um, it's been a busy month for me between my aunt's surgery and the boys coming home and moving to um, Boston and all that stuff. So, okay, I get it. I'm just now kind of catching up on May's videos. But I loved the idea for this tag and I wanted to jump in. So it's taken me a couple days to kind of figure out um, what I wanted to do with this. The concept is you are taking a tarot card that represents eight special moments of your life. Um, and so when I pulled these cards out, I tried to put them in order of chronologically how they came into being into my life. Um, and for me, the eight special moments are moments that I think probably shaped my spiritual path, which for me is probably, I hate to say most important, but it it's definitely one of maybe the top two or three things in my life, and it may be most important. Um, it is right up there with um, my marriage and my uh, relationship with my kids. Other than that, nothing else is as important to me as my spirituality. So there you go. Okay, so the first card uh, I am showing is from uh, the Llewellyn Tarot. Oops. Okay, so I'm backwards with my phone. This is going to take me a minute to figure out. Um, there, apparently, there's two Llewellyn decks, but there, the other one is like the Llewellyn something tarot. And But this is just the Llewellyn Tarot. Um, and the first card that I chose was the Hierophant. And to me, the Hierophant uh, is all about finding an important spiritual guide, uh, a spiritual teacher in your life. Um, and I think spiritual teachers come from all over. I think they can come from, you know, the Summerland. I think they can come from the spiritual realm. I think they can come from right here on Earth. I think they can come from your ancestors. Um, so the first, um, what I would consider major spiritual teachers in my life, uh, were both Catholic. I grew up Catholic. Um, my high school um, youth minister, her name was Marie Claus, and she um, is a very special lady who, you know, I feel bad. I live in the same town as her, but... Um, since I have become a pagan, I haven't, I've talked to her a couple times, but, uh, I, you know, sometimes I wonder if she knows how big an influence she had on my life. Um, when I was in high school, I think had it not been for that, my church's youth group, I, I was already kind of a rebellious teen, um, but I always knew that I had a home base in in her church in her youth group um to come back to and so it kind of was like made it okay to come back and be a good girl and do the right things and stuff even though I would go off and do my own thing and be rebellious and make some mistakes and that kind of thing I, I always had some place to come back to that I felt welcomed in that um, tried to teach me about being good to other people and um, spirituality. Uh, the other person was actually a priest in my church in high school whose name was Father Paul. And actually my youngest son, Joey, his middle name is Paul for Father Paul. He was um, one of those priests that was not judgmental at all. He, he was the first priest that I got to know on a personal basis. Um, I remember when we would do uh, 
confession, he would have invite you into his office and you would sit on his couch and you'd be like, so how's it going? What's been, what's been going on? How, how are things? He, every time he saw you, he'd give you a big hug. To me, that was the meaning of spirituality. This man just exuded what being spiritual was. He lived to make other people feel good about themselves, about God, about spiritual things. Um, and when I think of a true Christian person, he's like the definition of a true Christian. He did not judge me for any of the bad things that I did. He was always open and welcoming and um, just wanted to, you know, be there to show love. And um, I haven't seen him in quite a while, though I did see him about 10 years ago. He ended up moving to the Catholic parish of the house that Peter and I lived in for seven years in Watkins Glen up until about 2015, I think it was. Um, so I actually went to go see him a couple times, even though I you know, hadn't been a Catholic in a long time. And he was just as warm and welcoming and open and spiritual as he was back then, even though I'm sure he had heard through the Catholic grapevine that I was a pagan. So that was uh, an important step in teaching me what I wanted out of my spiritual life. And really that sun is blinding through the curtains right there. Unbelievable. Okay. Sorry. Um, so, uh, the second card I'm going to show you is from the Universal Love Deck by Tony Salerno. By uh, this, this deck. And it is the Soulmate card. So, uh, Peter and I met when I was 18. I was in high school. Um, we had a very, probably, rocky start, but it was one of those things that was very, you know, when you're young, love is very emotional, and and it's about the, the physical feeling and the attraction and that kind of stuff, and that was all there, but it, there was, like, just an, an immediate acknowledgement of belonging. I, it's since I met Peter, I never felt like I, um, like I didn't, I couldn't talk to him or I couldn't, oh, I can't believe that the sun is coming right in through my curtains. Wow, that's really super bright. Hold on, I'm going to move this over just a little so hopefully I can sit in front of it. Now, can I move the camera without screwing everything up? Um, so it, it just was always a sense of belonging. Um, we, we have been through all kinds of rocky times, um, but I always knew that no matter what, Peter and I could find each other again. Um, and that, to me, that's the, the meaning of soulmate. There is no question that... Um, that I could always come to him no matter what happened in our lives and he would um, pull me in and we would be together it just just was and um, as I have aged our relationship has changed a lot um, for the better it, it you know deepened and we um, have become best friends in the last probably 15 years 10 15 years um, and so I can't imagine not having him there to bounce my ideas off of and just everything that he, there is no, I can't imagine a future without him in it anymore. It's, it's a foreign concept and that, um, that kind of belonging gives me a stable base, I think, to grow from. So that's really good. So, then, the next card comes from the Tarot, ooh, Tarot of the Old Path. 
and um, I had a really hard time picking one card from here. So there's actually two stories, and I'll try to keep them short because I know I'm a talker. So the first one is the Empress. And that obviously is when I became a mother, which to me is a very spiritual thing. Um, I don't, I, I feel like I have made mistakes in my, my journey of being a mother, but I know I have always done the best I could um, and have put the kids first no matter what. And um, that really has made me kind of who I am. Um, I'm kind of, I feel like I'm a mother to a lot of people. Uh, we had, we always had at least one stray living with us between my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, my nieces, um, the boys' best friends we would have like living with us once in a while when they um, didn't feel like they could be at home. Okay, I have a new chair and it's driving me insane. I thought it would be good because it's up high like the table, but I think it's too high. Anyways, <laughs> distraction. Um, so, you know, being a mother just created a lot of who I am today. So a very special moment in my life. I always um, gave everything I could to my boys and um, I felt like we kind of grew up together because I had my first child Frankie was born when I was still 19. I was a month away from 20. So I was a kid too. And I always say um, that there was pros and cons to having children earlier in life, and there's pros and cons to having children later in life. When, when I had the older two boys, who are now 24 and almost 26, I had a ton more um, patience but not, no, a ton more energy, but not a lot of patience. Um, when the younger boys were born, by the time they were born, I was in my late 20s, um, and they are now, sorry, my nose is itching. My grandma would say I'm going to kiss a fool. Um, when uh, my younger kids now are uh, 19 and 16, um, and so when they were born, I had a lot more patience, but a lot less energy. So that's just the way it works. There's pros and cons to both. Uh, the other card that I had to choose from here, and I will try to keep it quick because I'm already at 12 minutes, is the close, which is the death card for the Terror of the Old Path. And to me, a, a very important uh, experience that I had was um, being there um, like by his side when my grandfather died, who was a very important figure in my life. He was the father figure that, um, as much as I love my dad, that he wasn't. He was, um, he just was always, he was always a father figure. Um, and so I, I felt that it was a great honor to be with him when he died. And someday I'll kind of tell that story if anybody's interested. It was a, a very spiritual experience and it, it was hard to leave him, but it was, I would say, one of the best spiritual experiences of my life is being honored by being allowed to be there when he passed over. It was a very great experience. Okay, so then we move on to the Earth Magic deck. I'm never going to get this right. I'm backwards all the time. Um, and the card that I picked for the Earth Magic deck was Crystals Focus. Um, this was kind of my first, my first dipping my toe in, um, to a different kind of spiritual experience, um, was using crystals to amplify energy, um, to, um, strengthen your prayer. Uh, I really found that using crystals uh, in my spiritual practice um, amplified things and it. it led me to study all kinds of different things. I'm a person who loves to learn 
and so I I began to study um, more metaphysical kind of things and that's what led me into studying that was that and also my son my son was born a medium um, and somewhere in my three years on YouTube here is a story of how I became a pagan so if you're interested in that it was probably a good two and a half years ago that video with my son in it um, but crystals definitely was my first foray into what what happens there uh, and then I became a pagan although I didn't really know what that meant um, I kind of I started looking into Wiccan although I knew that that wasn't that was too structured for what I was starting to believe um, and so I didn't know what to call myself for a while um, and then the more research I did the more I got a grasp of uh, you know what kind of pagan I wanted to be which now at this point I call myself an eclectic pagan or um, also a witch um, and um, the next card is from the Wisdom of Avalon Oracle deck that card is the Lady of the Lake and I chose that card because when I read the Mists of Avalon that was um, a huge leap forward in my spirituality um, because I I kind of saw what the goddess m meant to me and it was like a an awakening of okay this is you know I have always felt like something was missing from my spiritual practice and part of that is the feminine um, in regular Christianity type um, practices there isn't room for a feminine God um, and so that really opened up a lot of new things to me and it led me actually to become a uh, sister of Avalon there's a, a group of priestesses that run an actual sisterhood of Avalon and so I became a part of that um, which leads me into the next one is from the Book of Shadows Tarot and this one is actually from the I think it's the So Below deck I always get them screwed up there's two decks there's As Above and So Below oh maybe it's the As Above As Above deck um, and that is the card of judgment technically which is initiation you see the goddess and the god her standing in a circle with candlelights lit and symbols that is very similar to the initiation that I put myself through at some point um, after becoming a pagan I really um, kind of defined what my spirituality was to me um, and decided that I needed to initiate myself into uh, the goddess's belief system and I keep knocking crap over <laughs> Ooh, pens and um, anyways uh, I, I needed to initiate myself which I did on my own as a solitary practitioner I did not have any pagans in my circle in my world until other than this center other than my family um, my Four boys kind of followed with me for quite a while and now kind of down to two because two I don't know at this point they're probably atheists they're not sure what to believe in and we all kind of go through our own spiritual findings I guess so um, but at first all four of them kind of PJ did for a little while but not for very long um, followed uh, a pagan path for a while um, and you know, once I initiated myself, it was it very much a commitment to continue to learn and grow with the goddess and the god and a nature-based, earth-based path. Uh, and I felt that that was important for me to do. Again, a very special moment in my life. Uh, the next card, and then we're almost done. Ooh. 
is from the Goddesses and Sirens deck from Stacy DeMarco. Uh, and when I finally found uh, some other pagans um, and became really close to uh, a couple other pagans, one of them um, was uh, living in Rochester. And so I became very close to David and he is a Gardnerian. And if you are aware of any Wicca or pagan kind of path, Gardnerian is, to me, it's a very strict path, um, which is okay if that's for you. Awesome. But part of the reason that I did not go that way is because I want to seek out my own truth. And sometimes that does not go along with everything that every, that any, any path has specifically set out. Sometimes I find my belief system just doesn't line up perfectly. Um, but anyways, he, he is the one that talked to me about having a patron goddess. And, um, he, his patron goddess was Hecate, who he really tried hard, I think, to push me towards because he kept saying, I think that she's supposed to be your patron goddess. I, I really feel like she's supposed to be, you know, your, your goddess to start out with, that you're, your goddess to work with. And I did not feel that. So I, I kept investigating goddesses and I thought, I kept thinking, I, you know, it's just going to come to me. Well, it did. And that goddess was Mat, Mat however you want to call it. I have uh, dreamt of her and um, seen her in visions, and I call her Mayat. She is the Egyptian god of justice, goddess of justice. Uh, and because I'm a Libra, justice is extremely important to me. The balance of uh, things in life, the balance of justice, to me, equality and... Um, Everyone having their place is very, very important to me. And uh, Mayat was my first uh, kind of patron goddess that I decided, and she decided, um, was going to work with. And I still work with her a lot. Um, so she, she kind of really taught me about turning to a goddess as a friend, as a person, as an entity to guide you, as a person to call out to when you're in trouble, as a, um, as a spiritual advisor. Um, and I, when I became a pagan, that piece of it, kind of the gods and goddesses thing, was probably the hardest thing for me to grasp was I kept thinking, I don't know, all these gods and goddesses and stuff, how do I know who to talk to or who to pray to or who to look to? Or And um, so she really stepped up and taught me what I think a spiritual advisor is supposed to be. That was a very special time in my life. And since then, I have had other um, goddesses and a couple gods um, step in to that role. Um, but I don't think she'll ever go away because she's still important to me and I still call on her a lot. <laughs> and I'm sure partly because I'm a Libra. Uh, so the last one, yay, let's hope I keep it under half an hour, is from the Next World Tarot. I just love this deck. <laughs> Um, and it is the lover's card. This card um, is really about the latest spiritual step that I have stepped into, which is all about uh, self-acceptance. Uh, about I, I have struggled with my weight all my life. I have struggled with um, the way I see myself. I have struggled with feeling like I am not enough or I'm not, I mean, I've always had something in me that I knew I was a special being, but, um, you know, some days it's really hard to get up and look at yourself in the mirror and see the many chins and the 
fat that is around your face and not fit into the clothes that you want to wear and that kind of thing. Some days it's very hard to justify that person that is in the mirror with the person that I dream of as myself when I'm dreaming. It does not look anything like this. Um, so, because that's two different things, it has been um, a lifetime journey of trying to accept who I am. And I think probably within the last year, when I've had more time to do shadow work and introspection, um, since the boys have moved out of the house, um, on and off, but <laughs> since I've had to spend less and less time, you know, carting them around and being with them every second stuff when your kids suddenly grow up you find you have a lot more time for yourself um, but it it has been a year of introspection and learning to love this person this this shell this body that I am into for this lifetime with all my faults and um, with all and that doesn't mean I accept that oh well I'm just fat but it's, I forgive myself and I will work on it and do the best I can with it. But if for some reason, for any reason, I can't change this outer appearance, I still ac accept that this is who I am. And that's okay. It is not my ideal, but it's okay. And that has been a, a very weird journey to um, walk that line of acceptance. But, you know, yes, I, do I still want to be healthier? Absolutely. Um, but again, if for some reason this was it and there was no change ahead, I, I love me anyway. It's okay. So that is it. My eight special moments. Yay! I really liked this tag. I enjoyed it and it was a lot of fun and it was a lot of fun to pick out all the tarot decks and I have pulled out some decks that I haven't pulled out in quite a while so hopefully I will reconnect like the Llewellyn tarot. I haven't pulled that out in a while so that was really nice. Uh, so I thank you Diane for doing this tag and um, I hope to see you all very soon. Yay! It's Wednesday. At least we're over the hump. <laughs> Blessings. Hope you're having a great week.